If you're looking to get into any of the branches of cybersecurity, whether it be ethical hacking, penetration testing, or so forth, then Kali Linux is an operating system that you're going to want to explore. Now, in this video, we're going to look at installing Kali Linux and have a brief overview of the operating system itself. In order to download the Kali Linux operating system, you'll need to visit the Kali.org website, which will present you with this particular page, which gives you an option for downloading the operating system and the various methods which you could do that. So in the first option, we've got the installer image, which is the disk image file, which allows you to install the operating system on a physical device or a virtual device and install it from scratch. So set up the entire installation process from scratch. The second option we have, which is what we're going to go for, is the virtual machine. This is a pre-built virtual machine, which you can download and then log into and you can start playing around with the operating system. Now, we could potentially use the installer image, but that's a longer process. So let's go ahead and download the virtual machine version and we'll do it that way. There are some other options as well for running Kali Linux. You can actually run the, uh, a virtual machine in the cloud in platforms such as Azure or AWS. Um, there's a mobile option. I haven't tried this one, but I'll hopefully try this one and do a vid video on that as well. And then there's some other options, whether it's uh, running a live or creating a live USB image or live DVD image, and as well as running it on the Windows operating system. So let's go ahead and click on uh, the virtual machine, which is a recommended version. And we've pre we're presented with a number of options. So we've got the VMware option, the VirtualBox option, the Hyper-V option, and the QMU option. All of these are hypervisors that allow you to run virtual machines at, on your particular computer. So if you've got a desktop computer, let's say running Windows 10, you can actually run another virtual machine or another operating system inside a virtual machine, which is what we're exactly what we're going to do in this uh, scenario. So in my case, I've got VMware Workstation. If you've got VirtualBox, you can go ahead and download the VirtualBox version. If you're running Windows 10 and you've got Hyper-V enabled, you can also do that. So let's go ahead and just download the VMware version, which is a 64-bit. And as you can see down here, it's three gig in size. So I'll just click on the download option. And what this will do is, is it will download the disk image for me for uh, the VMware workstation, VMware workstation version of Kali Linux. So you can see at the top of my screen here where I'm just hovering, the download is in progress, it's three gig, and I've got just under a minute remaining. So let's come back once the download is complete. Once the download is complete, we'll need to navigate to the folder where we've downloaded it. So in my case, it's in the downloads folder. And as you can see here, there's the virtual machine uh, image file. It's a zip file, so you're gonna need some sort of a uh, application to unzip the file. Now I've got 7-zip built in so what I do is I'll right click on the file and in fact if I just click on actually if I just double click it to open it should open it with 7-zip let me just bring the window across here we are so it's just opened it with 7-zip right here now what I'll need to do is move this folder to a location where I can then access it later on so if I copy this to, what I'll do is I'll say copy to, and I'll copy it to my downloads for now, and I'll remove it from there later on, so I'll just say OK. And that's now copying the folder in here to my downloads folder. So as you can see in the background, just here, it's made a copy of it right here. So from there on, we're going to open this, the contents of this folder within uh, the VMware workstation, which should allow us to run the virtual machine. So let's just allow this to finish and we'll come back. Now that's complete, we will navigate to our VMware workstation. So just open up your virtual box or VMware workstation or whatever you have, and then click on open a virtual machine. And what we'll do is we'll navigate to downloads. And in here, here's my downloaded uh, Kali Linux image. As you can see now, it's 13 gig in size. Because it was compressed before, now it's a lot larger. So I'll click on this and then I've got the option to open the uh, virtual machine file or the configuration file. I'll select open and it should now give me some settings. So as you can see, it's got two gig of memory, uh, four processes, 80 gig of hard disk space and it's NATed which means it will pick up an IP address from my computer because this is running on my Windows 11 computer. Yes, yeah, so it's done the basic settings and it's imported it here. The next thing left to do is to power it on and see if we can get into this thing. Let's turn that on. 
and as you can see it's booting up so I've got the boot uh, option here now so it's gonna now boot up and hopefully get us into a pre-built operating system which would just allow us to log in excellent so here we are now that is the benefit of downloading the virtual machine image file if we downloaded the ISO file we would have to install everything from scratch as I said so we'd have to configure the hard disk size the CPUs the RAM um, install the image onto the hard disk and so yeah the whole if you've gone through an installation process before the entire process of installing an operating system but with this we've now got um, the login screen so let's just log into this and if I remember correctly the default username and password for Kali were root and the password should be Tor I could be wrong yep that is not correct so I'll try and get the password and username for this and then log back in in a second okay so I've just gone back onto the website and funny enough the username is Kali and the password is Kali fantastic so that's the image uh, the, the, the pre-built username and password for this uh, pre-built image is Kali and Kali so let's give that a try it used to be called root and tor so the username used to be root and the password used to be t-o-o-r or root backwards back when Kali used to be called backtrack so let's try Kali now and the password of Kali and there we go fantastic we have now completely skipped over the entire installation process and we've just logged into a pre-built ready-made virtual machine which we can now play with so this is this is one of the good things if you're somebody who's just starting off in cybersecurity or even just in tech and you know uh, technology and operating systems and so forth this is a good starting point for you it's always best to go through the installation process because that will allow you to see the installation process of an operating system however if you just want to quickly jump into an operating system this is the quickest way to do it now since Kali was built for penetration testers and ethical hackers and people who are in the cybersecurity industry it comes with a whole heap of pre-built applications just having a quick overlook on the actual interface it's a very sleek uh, interface it looks like a nice sleek desktop you've got your date and time at the top let me just go into full screen here right just so we can see the full screen of the operating system so you've got your date and time Sorry, the, yeah, at the top, if you just hover over that. And then after that, what else have you got? The computer, uh, you've got some notifications, volume control, and then the network. And on the network, you can actually see, uh, actually you've got some utilization information of the CPU. So CPU usage, you can click on that, and you get a little um, task manager that tells you what's going on in terms of resource utilization, memory, and so forth. So let's just close that off. Um, and you've got the lock screen you can lock the screen and you've also got the power button to shut down so that's all your options on the top right side desktops you can see one two three four this allows you to use multiple desktops so for example if I open up the Firefox browser now but there you go we're in the Google web browser now we're on the first desktop here as you can see because it says one if I just switch to two you'll see now I'm on a new desktop the web browser has disappeared so you've got you can actually have multiple desktop screens and switch between them so on this one I've got a web browser running on the second desktop I could have something else running and so forth so that's what that one two three four is for then you've got uh, a PowerShell command line as well as the root terminal emulator which is your um, your terminal emulator and then the root terminal emulator gives you root access which means you've got administrative privileges on this red one whereas the black one is just the normal terminal uh, shell and what else have we got here the Firefox browser text editor uh, your directory or your folder so you can go to you know you can go to your desktop documents downloads music uh, public templates videos whatever so this is just like your standard Windows profile folders and then here we have got you can minimize all the windows that are open so if I click on that it just minimizes everything click it back again and it reopens it that's just an overview of the desktop. You've got the trash bin, the file system, which is just your hard disk, if you like. You can go into that. And it gives you everything that's in your hard drive uh, in terms of operating system files and folders and whatnot. So we close that off. And then you've got your home directory folder, which is just, that's your profile, your profile folder. So you've got 
your desktop documents downloads again all your folders that you'd normally have in your profile when you log in now the interesting part is the applications that come pre-built with Kali Linux and if I click on the little dragon here you can search for applications you can go to favorites and add applications to your favorites and also you've got all applications we could you can just click on and go through every single application that's on here but the good thing is they also break it down into different categories so information gathering vulnerability analysis web analysis or web application analysis database assessment password attacks wireless attacks so applications that allow you to break into wireless networks or test how to break into wireless networks or Bluetooth and so forth and many more applications as you can see so you can go into each application you can actually get user guides and documentation for each one and read up on them and have a play around with them and test them now if you're going to use something that's for example let's say a wireless attack you're going to need a device your virtual machine is going to need a wireless dongle so you're going to need to attach a wireless dongle to your computer and then allow your virtual machine to access that wireless dongle so you can then listen in for wireless uh, SSIDs and search for wireless signals that you can potentially attack now as we said this is something you'd want to do in a controlled environment do this in your own home and in environments that you actually have control over and do not try and attempt to use these tools on somebody else's uh, environment so that's the applications and yeah the operating system is installed it's all done up and running so this Kali is Debian based Linux has many distros um, Debian is one of the most popular ones so to update your Kali Linux you just type in uh, you can actually do sudo uh, apt I think it's apt get and then update it will ask me for the password which is Kali and it should start updating your system so as you can see it says working and what it will do is it will connect to the uh, Kali site or the Kali repositories and it will start to download any available updates for your system you can also do the same for uh, upgrading as well so if there's a newer version um, of Kali that's out there instead of reinstalling it you can just do apt-get apt-get upgrade instead of update so we'll just let this run and then once this completes we'll come back and that was fairly quick so yes whenever you install a new operating system or run a new operating system obviously one of the key things to do is make sure you've got the latest updates I'm just going to do the same thing for the upgrade now if I just click on here and press up and this time just do upgrade which I'm sure is not going to do much because this should be the latest version of the operating system but we'll give it a try anyway upgrade and it's doing the same thing well it's actually asking me that after this operation 126 meg of additional disk space will be required so it looks like it's got some components to upgrade we'll say yes and we'll press enter because that's not really large 126 meg is fairly small so it should be fairly quick so in fact I want to pause the video so you can see what happens let's go through this and hopefully this should be done fairly quickly okay wow for 126 meg that took a lot longer than I expected so I had to speed that up a little bit because I thought that was going to be a lot quicker however seems like 126 meg took a while to upgrade but anyway that is the upgrade you saw the process it was the sudo apt get apt hyphen get upgrade and that then upgrades your system to the latest version of the operating system now just like with other Linux distributions you can also install additional applications to the operating system yourself so it doesn't look like Kali actually comes with the synaptic package manager so what we'll have to do is install it it's called synaptic so let's do get uh, sorry apt get synaptic I believe it is no is it apt get install is it install permission denied so I'll have to do sudo in front of it so let's do sudo apt get that and do Kali as the password 
yes we would like to install it so what we're going to install here is a package manager which should allow us to install additional software on our operating system just like you would um, with any other operating system so for example with the Apple Mac you've got the um, the Apple Store with Windows you've got the Windows Store or the Microsoft Store Kali and Linux has the package manager or synaptic synaptic package manager so let's get this installed and we'll just have a quick explore of some of the applications that we could actually install from there okay looks like that's done so now if I do a search for there it is synaptic package manager click on that password is Kali as you can see it's very secure whenever you need to do something admin that requires admin rights you need to put the password in uh, close this let's enlarge this and here you go so you've got a heap of a whole heap of options in terms of applications amateur radio communication some more communication stuff cross-platform um, debugging stuff databases email app, email clients uh, graphics let's just try installing alien arena let's see if this one gets installed click on mark so alien arena is just a it's just a first person shooter game that's always been part of Linux um, especially the Debian versions so I'll click on apply one of the first actually online networking games that you can actually play with other people around the world um, as a first person shooter so you're a character you're running around with a weapon shooting other aliens and it's almost like Call of Duty or Fortnite and this has been around for over 20 something years so well before the time when Fortnite and Call of Duty and games like that came around Let's just try this, see if this works. Okay, that looks like it's done. Close this. Alien Arena, there it is. If we click on Alien Arena now. So I've just installed an application or a game, just like you would on any of your other operating systems, whether it's Windows or Mac. Let's see if this thing can run on a virtual machine, because it is quite graphic intense. Okay, so this, I don't know what's going on here. It seems like my mouse is glitching and the options are all over the place for me. I probably need to add more RAM and more graphics to the virtual machine just to allow it to be able to run this game because it, it utilizes high, a lot of graphics. All right, my system, or my virtual machine guys, it seems to have crashed. Anyway, you can see I've installed a game. I have uh, installed an application onto the Kali Linux uh, virtual machine. My virtual machine doesn't have that, min that much resources. So I think that's what's causing me the problems and the slowness. I need to increase the RAM and the CPU. CPU should be fine. I think I might need to just increase the RAM on this and the graphics. So for now, because it can't handle the graphics at the moment, it's just a virtual machine, we're going to leave it there. But if you were to use this in your own environment, you'd want to give it more resources if you're going to be playing games on it. But in general, the reason we set this virtual machine up was so you can quickly deploy a virtual machine with Kali Linux and it can help you in your advancements or you know hopefully with your uh, technical skills in terms of using um, Kali Linux to do penetration testing or other security cyber security evaluations and so forth so on that note I hope you've enjoyed the video and if it's really helped you then please do like subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next video